Welcome. Thank you for listening to the Soulsome Word by David Entry. The words you catch will change your world. May your story change from this message. Be blessed. One of the problems people have with Christian, true Christianity is the subject of Trinity. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, 13 down to 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be, to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open upon him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. And Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. All right, shall we already allow together? Well, let's go. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. Amen. Wow. He says that I am he. Before me, no God. And before me, there is no God form. Neither shall there be after me. In other words, I'm not ending. Neither shall there be after me. So before me, no God. And after me, how many gods? Yeah. So. Before me, there is no God, and after me, there shall not be any God. That's what God says. So, he's God alone. Last week, I explained how the Shema, hear ye, O Israel, Deuteronomy chapter um, 6, verse 4. All right. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. It's not two, it's one. Now the problem people have with the Trinity is how I think Muslims tend to say that you Christians, there are two main problems is, is three, but they start with the first one that you say Jesus is God. The second one, you say God is three. The third one, you said the Bible is God's word. That, that is their biggest problem. So you can never tell us that we worship the same God. Because the fundamental approach to our God is what they have the problem. That who God is that founder. The cardinal principles of our theology is what they have. Jesus was not crucified because of the things he did. Because if he had to do with what he did, there was nothing wrong. He didn't, didn't do anything wrong. So he wasn't crucified because of the things he did. He opened the blind eyes. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out devils. He didn't get crucified because of what he did. He was crucified because of what he said. And there are two categories, I've said this before, two categories of things he said. First category are the things, commandments, said, forgive your neighbor, love your, uh, uh, forgive your neighbor. I said, the good Samaritan. I mean, so many things. When someone slaps you, you turn the right, right, you turn the left one, and... Pray for your enemies. That one, I don't like it. Pray for your enemies. <laughs> my human side doesn't like it. But my spiritual side is fine with it. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, those, those are some of the things he said. And he wasn't killed for that one. So there are two things he said. He wasn't killed. Things he said about life and things we should do. But what he said about himself is where the problem is. And he said that he and the Father are one. 
he in in Jewish culture they understood exactly what he meant by saying he's the son of God. The Bible says that yes, I think um, John five seventeen to nineteen. They said, you are blaspheming for saying you are the son of God. You are making yourself equal with God. They said, but for doing that, he maketh himself equal. He make, making himself equal with God by saying he's the son of God. You know, um, and then he's breaking the Sabbath day as well. So he said God was his father. So the things he said, so when Pontius Pilate said that, take him and crucify him by your, go and kill him. He said, no, in our law, we can't kill you. You have to kill him. But, 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 chapter 19 of John. Pontius Pilate said, but he hasn't done anything wrong. Why should I kill him? I think from this, the six, seven, somewhere there. He said, go and kill him. He said he hasn't done anything wrong. And they said to him that, he, he, in, according to our law, anyone who makes himself God ought to die. Or some law, according to our law, he ought to die because he makes himself the son of God. See, so he, their problem was, he said he's the son of God. And that's why they killed him. So they didn't kill him because something, of something he did. They didn't kill him because of um, saying good things, or te the te his teachings. They didn't kill him because of his teachings. They killed him because of the fact that he said, I'm the son of God. And he told them, I think, John chapter, yeah, chapter 6. Around 51, 52, 53. Yeah, I think so. 51, 52. He said, if I do not say, if I say I don't know God, the Father, I'll be a liar like you. <laughs> that, that's what he said. He said, you know, you are forcing me to say I don't know God the way I know him. But that would be like denying my nature. He said, uh, oh, chapter 8 is that, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I, I do know him and keep his word. I know him. And this knowing him is not the same as the way the Pharisees know him. He was trying to tell them, my relationship with the father is so unique that if I deny it, I'll be a liar. So that's why he could not say he's not the son of God. And that's what got him killed. He said he's the son of God. And that's who he was. And Islam has a big problem with that. Jehovah's Witnesses have a big problem with that. You cannot be a Christian if you have a problem with that. You can't, I mean, if you have a problem with that, you cannot be a Christian. And so, they, they have a problem with that and they have a problem with the word of God. You cannot be a Christian if you don't believe in the total Bible as the word of God. You, you are not a Christian. Maybe, oh, I, I've just got born again. I'm trying to understand. You see, Soundness of Christianity has everything to do with the word of God. So the most important of all Christian theology is this. This being the word. Not even like Jesus being the son of God. This being the word of God. Because outside this, there's nothing else. So everything we believe about God. So the most important of Christian theology is that God is this. And this is his word. And that's where the Christian conversation starts from. So... When people say, okay, let's put the Bible aside, uh, you are putting your Christianity aside. The meaning of your Christianity is what the Bible has got to say. And for that matter, tota scriptura. The whole Bible, not only part of the Bible, everything. Now, you can't believe, how can you live by your life by a book that was written many years ago? Newton, the laws of Newton, you, you are still studying it in university. Excuse me. You are still studying Sokatwa. <laughs> yeah, you, to, you, talk, you, you talk about Karl Marx. You, you talk about uh, 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 Plato, Socrates. You are telling me Socrates many many years ago. Some of them lived. Or some of the philosophers lived before uh, uh, Jesus Christ, and yet we still uphold some of the uh, philosophies they propounded. And you are telling me what? <laughs> Oh, how can you live your life by you are, you, are, you are actually not being smart saying that. Because we live our life by a lot of things that have been discovered in ancient times. We live our life by that. So please. So the, the, the Bible is the foundation of whatever we believe it holds. It's an authority. It's the final authority 
in any subject it, is, it handles. So, okay, did the Bible say anything about black etins? Yes, no. If it didn't say it, yeah, we can debate and choose. But if the Bible says black etin is the only etin, that's fine now. We, we, we can't discuss it. <laughs> we can discuss how to bait, but not uh, uh, whether we accept it or not. We don't. All right. But unbelievers can choose not to accept the Bible. That's what makes you an unbeliever, please. What makes you a Christian is you, you live by the word of God. What makes you an unbeliever is you don't. And I can't force an unbeliever to live by the word of God. Because he's, he, Jesus is not his Lord. That's it. But a believer means Jesus is not only your Savior, please. He's not only your Savior, he's the Lord and Savior. So if he's your Savior, he must be your Lord. That shows that you're a Christian. If you can't have him as Lord, he's not your Savior. That's what it means. Anyway, back to the Trinity. So now... I, as I told you, the questions that people will have always ask, I'll come back to that. But I need, I need us to establish the facts. Last week, I mentioned three things. Um, mystery, contradiction, and um, what was the third one? Paradox, thank you. So paradox, mystery, and contradiction. Paradox, contradiction, and mystery. And I said, a paradox is something that seems, you can't get it. It seems contradictory but it's still true. And when you hear it the first time, you might think it's not true, but it's actually true. It's a paradox. Whilst a mystery, a mystery is something, uh, a contradiction is something that doesn't make sense. You can't get your head around it. Contradiction. A contradiction is always, it always contradicts and it's always wrong throughout, through and through. But, but mystery is also something you can't get your head around it, but it's not contradiction. But, uh, so the Trinity is a mystery. The fact that we can't understand it does not mean it is not true. You see, while a contradiction, you can't understand it, and it's still not true. You go to heaven and earth, a contradiction is not true. A typical example is, when we say the Trinity, the problem is, how can you say God is three, uh, is one, and yet he's three? Please, it's not a contradiction. It doesn't undermine the laws of contradiction. The laws of contradiction is something being something else under the same condition. Now, we say God is one essence, but three persons. We are not saying one essence and three essences. We are not saying one person and three persons. That's contradiction. Yeah. So God is one essence. What's essence? Essentially, essence is the core nature, substance, what he actually is. Your, your, your essence, when you cut your blood, the essence of the blood is his blood. When you take it to the lab, you find out his blood is not water. And the essence, petrol, the essence, the substance, the constituent component of it. So God's essence, he is divine. So he's, by his one is in essence. That is why he said, I am God. Before me, there's no one. After me, there's God. I am just one. The Lord, your God, the Lord, is one. Before me, there's no one. And after me, there's no one. That, that's who he is. Okay. So the essence is one. But three persons. The persons are the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shall we all say that together? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please say it again. So, God, which in theological terms you can also still say Godhead. When they say Godhead, it means that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, who is who exists in three persons. Oh, I can't, I can't get my head around it. Obviously, you want to get your head around who God is. <laughs> Did you understand that? The very day, you, the very moment we, you understand God, He ceases to be God. Because he's beyond comprehension. But he's created us and given us, he created us in his image so that there can be a point of reference. So we are, in a way, we are like God. In a sense, there's a similarity because he created us in his image. But we are not the same. We are not God. We are humans. We humans are finite beings. Why is God is an eternal being? So when we talk about the Trinity, we are talking about, as I said the other time, one who, God. Three what? Persons. The Father is not the Son. The Son is, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Son. But the, the three persons 
are one God. So the Holy Spirit is God. The Father is God. Jesus is God. Now let's look at scripture. Where does scripture say Jesus is God? Where does scripture say the Father is God? Where does scripture say the Holy Spirit is God? I think if we do that, those bits one, then I can answer the other question. Does that make sense? Okay, but I think we should go to um, 1 Peter chapter 1. <laughs> Why are you so excited about my British accent? <laughs> you don't like my British accent? No. Oh. First Peter chapter one verse one. <laughs> Shall we all read it together? Let's go. Wait, let's. Until I said I'm reading from the, uh, uh, King James version, please. Let's go. An apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. The next verse, that's where we are going. Like according to the foreknowledge of God. Ah, 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 these people are elected, right? From Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Bithynia. Said, uh, they scattered. Said, elect according to the foreknowledge of who? God. Who? God. Ah, so the Father is God. So God, the Father. God, the Father. So right there, you can, we can see here that um, God, the Father, the Father is God. Okay, the the Father is God. Shall we all say that the Father is God? The Father is God. Please say it again. The Father is God. Say it for the last time. The yeah. is God. So God, the Father, the Father is God. All right. There are many, many, many more scriptures. Many, many more scriptures that we can look at to let us know that the Father is God. That's not been the problem. If you say God the Father is God, the Father is God, it's never been it's no it's not really been a major problem. So everybody accepts that the Father is God, right? So really there's no need to spend so much time to get into that because um the scriptures have already said it over and over and over, and it's always commonly known and accepted. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 20. One is a tell ye and bring them near ye. Let them take counsel together who has declared this from the ancient time, who has told it from the time, from that time. Has not I the Lord? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there's none else. Now, this is God talking. I'm God. There's none else. It doesn't matter where he said, there's no other God. Yeah. And I am the Savior. And he said, not only for the Jews, all to the ends of the world. That's what he said. It. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, everywhere I am. And there's one God. So just to let you know, that God you are calling on is not a God, it's a demon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a demon impersonating God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. In John chapter 8, verse 58. Now, Jesus Christ, the next thing they will tell you about, but Jesus Christ, uh, is he God? I think even before I look at that, let's go to Paul, right? In Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Pardon me. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It says that, I think we should start from verse 11. Oh no, I'm doing that thing again. But I know you like the Bible. Yeah, it's right there. Verse 11 says, for the, that, that's a very strong scripture, you know. That's why I like it. For the grace of God that brings salvation. Oh, salvation is a function of grace. I don't want to be distracted. I will preach from here right now. The grace of God that brings. Pastors don't bring salvation. The grace of God that brings, it's not evangelist that brings salvation. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all. In other words, it's not restricted. Anyone who comes into contact with you are available for salvation. And is ready to save you. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. In other words, there's no human being that is beyond salvation. Whether a criminal, a seemingly holy person, good person, bad person, 
um, someone in Satanism and someone in charismatism, speaking in tongues, but not saved. He said, <laughs> you know there are people who are speaking tongues and not saved. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. But the Holy Swelly Ruler, I don't know that name. They leave the next word. Teaching, if you are saved, there is this grace that saved you also teaches you that you should do something. How come you are saved, but the, salvation, the grace that saved you didn't tell you that one? What kind of salvation is that? It's not authentic salvation. Because authentic salvation is a function of grace. And saving grace teaches. And saving grace, it tells us what it teaches. It teaches, it teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this no letter. How come you are saved and this part is not part of your salvation? And it's not a true salvation. So, it says that teaching us that denying worldly ungodliness and worldly lust, we should... Uh, and we should live soberly and godly in this present world. Now look at the next verse. Look, oh, how can you live proper life without looking forward? So the more they take away this, the expectation of the second coming, the more you can live a certain life. Yeah. So that becomes problem when a church we focus only on now, now, amen, amen, now, now. All your for twenty years, for fifty years, for ten years, it's all now. It's all now. That's why people won't do evangelism. And even the evangelism, you are going because you want a breakthrough, your husband, a wife, and that guy also likes it. So some so many things, but it's not because. It's not because you are looking forward to the second coming of Christ. It says that looking, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God. What? Our great God. And he said, ah, ah. And he said, so you should know. I'm telling you, I'm talking about Jesus. Our God, our great God. Okay, now, people will say, but our great God and our Savior. No. This great God and Savior is referring to one person. He is the God and Savior. So Paul is saying that Jesus Christ is, if I didn't mean Jesus, God, he said great, he's great God and Savior, and he's going to return. Great God and Savior. Jesus is God, and not just God, great God and Savior, Jesus. And Peter also says it in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. It says, um, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that are obtained like precious oh, faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The same person. The righteousness. Now, the righteousness is not talking about God's behavior, but Jesus' righteousness. That has, we go before God in the righteousness of Christ. So here, Peter is saying Jesus Christ uh, is God. Paul said it's God. Maybe you say, okay, but Peter and Paul, they just hijacked their own philosophy onto scripture or hijacked scripture and imposed their own, own philosophy. Let's see what Jesus has got to say. Okay. In John chapter 8, verse 58. Let's all read it out loud, please. Let go. Jesus. Look at the grammar, first of all. Before Pastor Kobe go to England, or I, I'm trying to say, I've, I'm, I've been in England before he came. Before Pastor Kobe go to England, I, I was. Before Pastor Kobe go to England, I was in England. But what, what kind of English is this? How can you say before Abraham, I am? That's not normal English. If this is just grammar, you should have said, I was. So is there something wrong with the grammar? No. It's not a grammatical error. It is, that, that I am is not, um, it, is, it is a claim. Now, the Jews understood exactly what he meant. Look at the next verse. Uh, let's see what happened in the next verse. Then they, uh, they, 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 what did they do? To go stone, cast him. And Jesus said to him, They wanted to do what? 
But for saying before Abraham, okay, let's assume he's deluded. All right. Now, let's say I'm telling you that um, before Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill became prime minister, I actually used to talk to him. Now, you know I have a problem, right? You just know I'm not okay, right? Now, Abraham is many years. He was not, Jesus was not even yet 50 years. And he was saying before Abraham, let's assume that he meant I was. That is madness. But so why would they want to stone him? No. But he said before Abraham, I am. And he used the word that Jews don't refer to anybody but God. And he said, I, 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 think, I think we read Isaiah chapter 50, 43 verse 10. Look, look at Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10. Before the Exodus chapter 3 verse, verse I think 14. When they sent Abraham, Exodus chapter 3. Okay, you are already, okay. When God, Moses said, if I, I'm going to this Jews, when I go, you are sending, who should I say sent me? He said, when you go, say I am. Say I am. Let's all say it again. Now, and those days, in the days of Jesus, they were read, watch this. They used to, what the Bible they were reading, especially the, 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 the Greeks or the Jews, was the Greek version, most of them, it was the Greek version of the Hebrew scriptures. So the, the way we are reading the English version, they were reading the Greek version because it was written in Greek. So, if it, so the Greek version of the Hebrew, they knew exactly the Old Testament, which was, which is the, I think the Greek version is the Septuagint. They knew what it meant. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. God actually said it again. Look at this. Some of you didn't pick it up. 43, verse 10. He says that, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servants who I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that. You see, you see that, that wasn't it, it's the English that was. But what is it? Understand that I am. So in the, I am. I just want you to know that I am. So anytime they use the word, that's God's name, I am. I am. It's a very sacred name. And then Jesus comes on the scene, and he said, before Abraham, I am. But interesting, okay, it, it could sound like, before Abraham, God. No. When he said God, the Greek word translated with I am is ego imi. Now, ego means I am. Imi means I am. But imi, ego is more like describing um, I am, and then it, it, uh, it, 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 that's where you get ego from. Ego is me, and then uh, imi means I am. So what you are saying is that before Abraham, I, uh, me, I am. Me, I am the I am. So you are trying to tell, before Abraham, me, me, I am the I am. Not that I am, I was there. It's that I am, I am, I am. You see? I am, so because ego means I am, Imi means I am, and he said, me, I am, I am. I am, I am. How, how, can you, how can you say before Abraham you are the God? You are the one. So Jesus actually, that's why they took up stones, to kill him. Because he said, I am, before Abraham, me. I am the one who said, I am. I, it's, it's me, there's no difference. What? In John chapter 8, verse 24. He says that you will die in your sins. He said, Oga, make her talk you. You go die. He said, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that, I am. that's the English, but it's supposed to be, I am. If you don't believe me, I'm God, I am, you are dying in your sins. So Jesus, in his own words, said he is God. There are about seven other places in scripture or in John alone where he said, I am for there's a place I am the vine. John 15. I am the I'm the, the door in John 10. I am the, the great shepherd of the sheep. John 10. I am the resurrection and the life. John 11. All this and all those I ams, he was referring to who is like the ego in me. Ego, he was claiming deity to himself. So when they said Jesus never said he's God, you didn't understand. You don't go and read it again. He actually claimed deity. In fact, for saying that he's the son of God meant he was God, uh, which we, we saw earlier on. So Jesus uh, said he was God. And I think this one will be exciting to note. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, let's do, let's do that exercise quickly. 
Is somebody learning something? Yes. I mean, I like the Bible. It's sweet. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Shall, shall we all read it from the screen together? Let's go. Now look at verse 13. Who, who is talking now? Who is talking? What did he say? Alpha is the, the first uh, letter in the uh, Greek alphabet. And Omega. The, I am the beginning and the end. Wow. There's none before me. He said before, look at chapter um, 1, verse, Revelations 1, 8. What does it say? Let's go. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. Uh, but is it not Jesus who said, I come quickly, my word is with, and he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. When he was addressing, he, he addressed the people, he addressed his people, he addressed the church and saying that, okay, chapter, chapter 1, verse 18, I am he that liveth, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the, um, no, no, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet, and he, he laid his hand, his right hand upon me, saying, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am the, let's all say, I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. Please say it again. I am the first and the last. So Jesus said he is the first and he is the last. And uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Let's look at that quickly and then we can move on. I want to say something. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. We read it earlier on. Shall I read it again? This God, he said beside me there's no God. The king of Israel, this is what I'm saying. This is, that says the Lord, the king of Israel, who, is the, who again is this one? Who again? Is it not the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Who is the one talking? The God of Elijah. He said, listen, I am the God of Israel, the king of Israel, he, uh, and his redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Who else is the Lord of hosts now? I am the first and the last. And besides me, there's none. Then Jesus comes. He said, I am the first and the last. Isaiah chapter um, 40. Let's look at 48 verse 12 again. Isaiah 48 verse 12. He said, listen to me. And now give us a new King James. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my God. I am he. I am. So if Jesus then shows up. And he's talking to his church. And he says that I am, Revelation chapter 1 again, verse 17. He said, don't, don't be afraid, John. I am the first. But, but this is, it's God who was talking. Okay, let's read. I think we should read it to see if it was God or Jesus. If it was the Father or Jesus. Now, it says that. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. But pastor, that doesn't mean it's, the, uh, it's Jesus. Maybe it's the father talking. The father who was speaking in Isaiah is the same word. Oh yeah, you're right. Also, let's look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. I am he that liveth. I was dead. Eh? Which, 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 which one was dead? <laughs> I was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. Who was dead? Is it not Jesus who came to die? So Jesus actually claim and said he is the alpha and the omega he is the first and the last the title that only god gives you and god said besides me there's no one else is alpha and omega no one else is first and last and if jesus comes and say i'm first and last it's the same god talking now yes. shout hallelujah. hallelujah shout jesus is god jesus is god praise god so we can tell that our jesus is god and in John 1, 1, you remember, in the beginning 
In the beginning, I can't hear you. In the beginning, how about the word? The word was with God. That's a relationship. Watch, 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 watch. To be with. To be with. <laughs> to be with. It's talking about relationship. I've said this before. God is the only self-contained community. He's a community in himself. There's no religion that depicts God as love. When anyone says God is love, it's a Christian, the, the theo, Christian theology that depicts God as love. Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon said that you have put a lion in a cage and you are fighting to defend the lion. He said, go, get off. Release the lion from the cage. It will, it will defend itself. Don't let us try to protect Christ and protect the gospel. Just preach the gospel and the gospel itself will defend itself. The gospel is powerful enough to convict. Just Preach the gospel and stop trying to be nice so the gospel doesn't look somewhere and be nice and you're trying to enjoy everything. Just preach the raw gospel and the raw gospel convicts. The raw gospel saves. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop defending the lion. Yes. Release it from the cage. It will defend itself. So when people say, oh, uh, 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 all the other gods. God, remember, God said there's no other one. Okay, I'm the only one. And which one is he talking? Because other ones to say that, that God is the one. God has given us his names in the Bible. Yeah. If you don't find anyone mention that and the, mention a name of a God that is not found in the Bible, that is not God. That's maybe a devil or something like that. Yeah. How can you say that? You say, you people are bigot. You are rather the bigotest one <laughs> for, the, for thinking someone speaking from the word of God is bigot. So, now, coming back to the point here. Love. Say, God is love. God is love. Say it again. God is love. Bible says, God is light. God is love. God is spirit. In John chapter, uh, chapter 4, I think John 4, 7, Bible says, God is love. Wow. Oh, it's 8, 16, somewhere there. Yeah, 7, let, let us love. God is love. God is love. God is love. Let's just say God is love. God is love. How can you love when there's not another person to love? Think about it. You can't say you have love until there's someone else to show your love to. So if we say, I love, you love what? There must be something. I love. So for God to be love, if he was love before he created everything, then there's nothing to love. But God, because God is Self-contained commitment. Three in life. There is a, an existing relationship in God. That's why Jesus said, the Father loves me. Mm. And Jesus said, I love the Father. Yes. That's why he said, I came to die. I came to do his will because I love the Father. And he said, the Father loves the Son and he has given all things to the Son. Mm. So there is love already existing before anything showed up. Wow. Existing in God. Because God is three persons. One God, but three persons. Mm. And love can exist within God. Now, here, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, but it didn't end there. And he said, ah, the word is God. The problem, how can you be with somebody and you are that person? How can you be with and you are? That, the, the only way this can be explained is the Trinity. He is the word was with God, and the word was God. And the verse 14 even makes it even more serious. He said, this word which is God, it was made flesh. Uh -uh. So the Pharisees say, you can't say you are God. He said, if I, do, I don't do that, if I deny I'm God, I'm lying. I'm a liar. Because that, that's my essence. That's my nature. That's me. I am God. So the word was God. Jesus, the scripture saw that Jesus is God. Now quickly, the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 5, verse 3, as they were, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, the first hypocrites in the church. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came and tricked Peter and they brought the money and, and they kept back. Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to who? <laughs> to lie to who? <laughs> to lie to who? <laughs> but he was talking to Peter. Yeah, but the church is led by the Spirit of God. So he said, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. 
I lied to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, where are you? Look at verse 5. And Aeneas, hearing these things, fell down and gave out a ghost. And great fear came upon everybody. Verse, verse, I think verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together, husband and wife, to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who... Okay, I think let's go to the verse 7. I, I think it's verse 7 I'm looking for. And it was about space of... Uh, uh, okay. Let's go to 4. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's start from 3. Let's start. Well, verse 3. Okay. Verse 3. Le verse 3. Is that okay? <laughs> verse 3. And Peter, I think that's why it's better I stay behind the cup. Uh, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back, keep part, keep back part of the build me a house? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's bring you home. Let's 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 get real here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Even the speakers have realized that somebody is here. Why have you kept why have you kept part of the look at the next verse? It says that whilst it remained, was it not you you could have chosen not to have joined the team that was saying I'm giving ten thousand, I'm giving you could have free free by you. Why do you deceive the church? It was your own money. After it was sold, it was 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 it not in thy own power? It's your own, whatever. Those who said, those who say I don't give time, it's your own money. Choose to do whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Why has thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou thou uh, 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 Thou hast not lied to men, but to who? God. Verse 3 says, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to who? The Holy Spirit. And now verse 4 says that you have lied to God. Oh, the Holy Spirit is God. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, Whilst they fasted and prayed, the Holy Spirit said, What? Separate unto me. Who is talking now? Separate, uh, Barnabas, so for the work where I've called them. Holy Spirit has called them. Paul, the apostle, called of God. Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ and of God, called to be an apostle. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. The Holy Spirit said, I have called them. But it's God who called them. But the Holy, why? Because the Holy Spirit is God. All right? Paul, a servant. Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. He was called to be an apostle. Separated unto the gospel of God. God, he was called. The Holy Spirit said that I'm the one calling him. And it's God who called Paul. So Holy Spirit is referring is, is referred to as scriptures as God. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this something that requires advanced maths to understand? <laughs> the truths of scripture are so plain that even the most unlearned can get it. Watch this. So we have seen that the Father is God, the Son is God. The Spirit is God. Let me even go to the Son. Uh, there's a scripture, it's a very important scripture. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. It said, don't let anyone spoil you with all kinds of ideologies, philosophy. It said, be careful, let someone will spoil you. Wow. Yeah, people can spoil you, you know. Yeah. There are people who are spoiled <laughs> by wrong doctrines. Because you've said that, Associating with some people, funny people. You see, there are certain teachings, it only produces ungodliness. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. It's not holiness. It spoil you through ideologies, philosophies. That's why you have to be strong in scripture. Spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit after the tradition of men, not after the, uh, uh, after the rudiments, of, uh, uh, rudiments of the world, not after Christ. Then look at what he said about Christ. Ha! Ah, for in ooh, he said in Christ, eh, all the fullness of God, God dwells in Christ. Huh? So God, God in His fullness dwells in Christ. Christ is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is God. The reason why these things are important is that so that. People can understand what the, where the scripture stands because there are always people who, who come with their own versions. It's very important. Now let me finally add this. The questions people ask about the Trinity. 
I won't, I won't tackle all. The word Trinity is this, so they say the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Why? Oh, that's simple. When we say God is omniscient, what does that mean? Knowledge, conscience. Yeah, so awareness. So omniscient is omni is all shame, knowledge. So God is all he knows everything. What if we say God is omnipresent? It's everywhere. Yeah. Omnipotent. All powerful. Where do you see omnipotent? In the Bible. Where do we see omnipresent? Trinity is tri unity. There are three persons, one God. Say three persons. Three persons. One God. One. Say that again. Three persons. Three persons. One God. One God. The concept is so strong in Scripture from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelations. It's so strong in Scripture. It's very clear, unambiguous in Scripture. But in the, in the early days, the church fathers sometimes came up with certain words so that those words, once you stumble, across, you stumble upon it, that means you are not a genuine Christian. So it helps protect the church from wrong teachings. So once you say Trinity, do you, what do you know about the Trinity? Uh, 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 how can God be three? Okay, then, uh, okay. Many people, many, that usually, usually, uh, okay, let me say it the other way. Usually, the Western, the Western Christian, Christianity from ancient times, Western Christianity. So like a, a school like this, which is very, I think very Christian, uh, Christian it is. If we want to come and worship here and we say we are Christians, first of all, they have to check some things about us. What do you believe about the Trinity? What do you believe about Jesus? Those things, there's something called shibboleth. Some people can't say church, they say church. All right. Or shiren, shiren. So, Sometimes this guy, this guy who is called, who is called John Smith, said, I've always lived in England. I was born and bred in England. And he said, oh, okay. Uh, say the children are going to church. He said, the children are going to church. <laughs> you, know, you know that this guy, you can't say it. So it's shibboleth. So, so, shibboleth. Now, a Christian shibboleth, they had to come out with these doctrines like, the inerrancy of scripture. When we say inerrancy of scripture, the scripture cannot err. Whatever it says, it cannot err. So we ask you, what do you think about inerrancy of scripture? So, oh, uh, yeah, there are things that I don't, uh, okay. Then it helped me know where you stand. It's clearly, it helped me know your stance. So those ones are shibboleth. So the Trinity. What do you think about the Trinity? Oh, I mean, God cannot be, okay. Now, so if you say a Christian, those are the, how do you get justified? What is justification? How does it? So that's why I've been teaching some of these things. Because it helps you. When people can define it, it helps you to know where they stand as Christians. doesn't matter the title and the miracles they may say they can do. Check. This is a Christian shibboleth. So the Trinity is also a shibboleth which the fathers gave. So that it, it summarizes so much in one word. So once you, you say Trinity, you, you can't go off. We all know the Trinity. It's not in the Bible. But it's a concept that is strong in the Bible. Let me add one more. They say Jesus Christ, the Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. The argument is, but the Bible says Jesus Christ is a creature. He never said Jesus is a creature. He never said. Let's already read it. Let's go. He didn't mean he's a creature. Oh, but when he said first, that means that he was the first that was made. First born of, so that's what some people believe. That Jesus Christ was a special creation of God. Created first. He and Lucifer. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Gnostics. Jesus and Lucifer, they were brothers. But Lucifer rebelled. Like the prodigal son. He rebelled. But Jesus kept his, you know. So when people tell you that, what do you think, what do you think about the gospel of Philip? That's where they are leading to. What do you think about the gospel of Thomas? See, Shibboleth. This is the, Bi the Bible. There's nothing else. Any other thing written is not part of the Bible. This is the full word of God. Any other thing in inserted in it is not the word of God. Yeah. It's as simple as it doesn't matter how what history books are saying. You know, there are other extra biblical accounts. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Anything that contradicts the word of God must be thrown out. Gospel of Philip. Who cares? Who cares? 
gospel of Thomas, excuse me. When you are looking for a reason to sin, you begin to look for all kinds of funny ideas. You, what, what, do you, what do you even know about this Thomas thing? Who is Thomas? Who is Thomas? All right, so, so quickly, Jesus Christ, they say he's a creation. He's a, he's a creature. No, he's not a creature because he says he's the firstborn. It's just like in, in Exodus chapter, I think, 422. God says about Israel, Israel is my firstborn. Doesn't mean it was the first, crea- uh, first of the nations created. He says that, that's that here the Lord. Israel is my first son, even my firstborn. Does that mean Israel was the first nation created? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's an idiomatic expression that means that they stand above all the others. Pre, they, they have preeminence. They have eminence. They have high, higher priority among all. When, when, when there is war somewhere in another nation, the British government doesn't go and take everybody. First of all, you let's save the British passport holders. Passport holders. If you don't have a passport, sorry. British passport holders. That's the pride. They are the firstborn. Excuse me. What does... What, what? First lady... That's if he's the oldest lady in the country. <laughs> so when you say Jesus is the firstborn of, firstborn of every creature, it's that anything created is under his authority. That's what he means. Look at the next verse and I'll end on there. Look at the next verse. For by him, that is his explanation. By him were all things created. Created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they, are, they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. And for him. That's what it means for him to be firstborn. So don't say Jesus is firstborn, so he's a first of creature. Amen. Did you receive something? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Shout Jesus is, God. Jesus is God. The Father is God. The Father is God. And the Spirit is God. The, is God. the Blessed Trinity. The Trinity. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. You're welcome to connect with David Entry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also find more spirit-filled messages from Caris Church on YouTube and all relevant streaming platforms. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the message. Be blessed.